Hi, I'm Ed Sproing. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Dinraj Shetty from Spansion, who's going to talk to you today about where MCUs, which you typically think about as part of a car, but they're being used in different ways and for many different things, and they're a lot more complex than they used to be. So, Dinraj, we've been hearing a lot about MCUs for quite a while, and we think we know what they are, but they're really changing quite a bit, right? What's what's happening now, and what are some of the challenges that you're facing with them? So what's happening in the auto industry especially is that the amount of electronics that have gone into the car has grown exponentially over the last few years. Today, you have almost a hundred processors or a hundred or more processors in the cars that are specifically targeted for a variety of functions and these functions could range all the way from the navigation systems to the instrument clusters all the way through the driver assist systems what we call the ADAS which is essentially you know connecting for lane changes connecting for your rear view camera you name it I mean the the amount of electronics that goes into the car is in the hundreds of pounds I mean, if you, if you imagine, at some level, it even adds to the weight of the car. And one of the bigger problems that you see because of the proliferation of these devices in the automotive is that the power, not just the power consumption, but the thermal effects of the power, which is the heat dissipated by the uh, by these devices, is also becoming a, cons uh, a problem, especially in a closed, confined space like a car, where the there isn't a whole lot of heat sinking or you know uh, ways or there isn't a whole lot of ways for it to dissipate because it's a very closed environment and it's in often very cramped space so power efficiency and reduction becomes a big a big issue for the microcontroller designs because the car is now an open space you have a, a essentially a live network connection inside the car and security becomes a big act problem because what happens if somebody can simply tap into this information network that you see uh, flowing across the car? And there are many, many protocols that are being developed to, to control the security of the car. Now that adds to the complexity of the MCU as well, and also potentially to the amount of power that is being, that's going through it, right? Yes, that is correct. Um, the complexity is both on the software and the hardware side. So we have to ensure that uh, the software stacks that are being provided along to the uh, to the uh, along with the processors are are very uh, tightly coupled with the hardware to ensure that they first of all get the optimal performance from the car and also to ensure that they are bug free so there are various standards that have developed just to ensure that these code this code is uh, performing at a level that is essentially bug free because you cannot really afford to have a glitch in the code during the operation of the car. How much carryover is there in the terms of the designs that are done for a mobile device versus an MCU that will end up in a car? The car is much more rigorous in terms of reliability and the uh, uh, thermal uh, issues and everything else, but is there any overlap in terms of the design or is it completely different? Automotive tends to be very, very different. First of all, the life cycle of a part in a car automotive in, in, a, in an automotive uh, um, uh, market is much, much longer than in the mobile market. Uh, products that are designed are intended to work for five, ten years or beyond. In the mobile market, these tend to be very short-lived. So, so the 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 products are tailor-made and there's a lot of customization that goes into these automotive markets and they also follow a much much more stringent standard uh, in order just to meet these longevity requirements one of the problems with that though is that a lot of the standards that are in the automotive uh, world are still being developed and you're designing parts that are 10 years into the future but the standards may change along the way how do you manage that uh, uh, disparity well, it is a problem that, that, for, for sure, but uh, the standards themselves, um, the, the ones that the automotive industry has already put in place are the ones that are being deployed today. So yes, these may not be compatible with the future standards, but that's an evolution of the standard itself. Um, currently, there is a lot of focus to make sure that what exists today has enough uh, quality and testing that you put behind it in order to meet those standards. How about the tools that are being used to develop these MCUs? Are they all there? Are they fully complete or are there still gaps? I think 
they are always playing, the tools always play catch up. I mean, there is always the requirements and the tools that need to be developed to catch up to these requirements. So there is always a gap. And usually the gap is filled with exhaustive manual effort. And, and unfortunately, this is just the way the industry is today. You do have to um, invest a significant amount of effort to manually cover these gaps that you see in the tools, especially in the area of testing, software, co software hardware co-simulation, the coexistence of these, and identifying and tracking and removing bugs from the system. And software is one that we keep hearing about over and over again because it is a relatively new and sort of an exploding type of market where you keep adding more and more software engineers just to try and solve the problem. That has not been automated yet. No, no. And um, and until the tools catch up, that is something that is still going to, to remain. It's, that's a huge gap already. Where else are you seeing problems? Is it primarily just the software or other things too? Power estimation, things like that? Well... One, one of the problems we're seeing now is uh, the scalability of the devices. So as process scales down, uh, leakage goes up. I mean, power is simply something that is very hard to scale along with the process. So the focus, so, so the, the nodes uh, at which these microprocessors operate are relatively larger compared to the rest of the industry. And the primary reason for this is, again, is, uh, is, uh, is keeping control of the power. So we are, we have a lot of uh, designs that are still operating at the 90 and the 40 nanometer modes. And even in those uh, technologies, there is a significant effort that is made to try to lower the leakage. Because it's not just enough to put things in standby, you still have a significant amount of leakage on, on board that you need to reduce. And so to meet the stringent automotive budgets, sometimes these nodes have to, uh, there has to be design, you have to play a lot of design tricks to actually keep a handle on the power. And 40 nanometers is not the 40 nanometers it was five years ago, right? It's a it's a brand new uh, process technology with a lot of the features that were have been brought back from some of the more advanced nodes. That is correct, that is correct. Uh, and, and there is continuous improvement being made there as well. Another thing that is that also needs to be added onto the 4 nanometer node is in order to support some of the onboard storage, a lot of these MCUs have onboard storage, which is flash. And to support the flash storage, you do need to add additional uh, mask layers to support, uh, which helps to create a lower leakage process. When you look at the mass market versus the automotive, how does that change? What's happening there that is not, I mean, we understand pretty well what's happening in the auto industry, but what's happening now on the mass market side? Well, the mass market is growing tremendously, especially in the area of the IoT, as well as in applications such as industrial and consumer builds. And the overriding driving force there itself also is, is um, creating small devices which are low on power and very highly compatible with the variety of sensors out there. So it's essentially interfacing with all these sensors, creating a common standard so that they can all talk to each other and then um, using that to proliferate the ecosystem. So, so you could think of computers at one point where the, where the primary focus of development, you would develop all the focus was centered around developing a, a big computer and making it bigger, faster, and stronger. But now the focus has moved to having these little tiny devices talk to each other, uh, each of them being extremely simple but very custom to their needs. And so it's a it's spreading the or distributing the computing environment across a much larger um, ecosystem than concentrating it on a few strong computers. So the mass market market is actually just headed towards building and understanding interfaces that can connect these little tiny devices to each other. In those markets, one of the big advantages of uh, particularly the edge devices is the ability to really narrow down exactly what you're going to do. So instead of having a general purpose type of processor, you want something very specific for a very specific reason as opposed to everything does uh, works here. Right. How is that working in terms of how do you design that on a mass scale and still be able to develop at that rate? Well, I think the trouble there, the biggest problem we have is, is it, ha it is system driven and it is really hard to design it from a processor standpoint. You need to actually take a system level approach because 
you need to understand the target market and the target environment and how it relates to what the device can do. And because that market is changing constantly, what tends to happen is that these products tend to be developed and redeveloped over and over again. So um, because they are not fully kind of integrated into the system environment, into the system, they, the, the specs for them tend to be very, very fluid. So the, 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 I say, uh, the movement or the, the direction of the industry is actually to try to create system level specs that will help drive the specs down into the actual processors. Okay. Dinrashay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.